What's good, YouTube? It's me, your boy, Squid, back in another video. So, we made this deck actually a lot better than it was yesterday. We were talking about Castira Chimera, and I was literally enlightened by the fact that Brand Infusion is absolutely nuts. And in part, I gotta give a huge shout out to the Cali Effect, who actually has a video on his channel about this deck, the Chimera Branded deck. And it just goes to show the sheer power of Branded Fusion being able to mesh well by sending Gazelle the King of Mythical Claws in order to make the Rinbrum, the Striking Dragon, which requires Fallen Valbaz plus one Beast type monster, allows you to actually trigger the effect of Gazelle in the graveyard to search any copy of an Illusion monster, aka Mirror Sword Knight, aka Cornfield Quado, to get into your full combo. So that is just crazy on its own. Not to mention the fact that Brand Infusion is just an insane extender mid to late game. You can also search for other things, obviously dumping any copies of Effect Veiler or Nibiru or Mirror Sword Knight himself is a light to go into Albion the Brandon Dragon, into Mirror Jade to just control the board and go for powerful OTKs is kind of nuts now that I think about it. So yeah, big shout out to him for kind of showing me that. And after testing this deck, I realized it actually has some legs, especially with the Brandon stuff, because it's basically a mishmash of one card engines, one card starters, and one card good stuff cards like the cash tier monsters which we cut out a little bit on i figured just having one unicorn plus the birth is probably enough i was running into some occasions where the rise hearts and like teosis actually clashed because of the fact that you have to use big wing burfamet before you use those effects and the minute you use big wing burfamet you're kind of locked into fusions which means that your teosis is really only fetching a copy of fanware when you activate it on unicorn after you search it so we decided that Maybe one unicorn is fine because what you can do with Castier Fenner is just search the unicorn and you have instant follow up on the following turn with Castier Burst. So you can go into either Unicorn Fenrir or just your different XYZ plays. So things like Dark Arm, the Dragon of Annihilation, really helpful in clearing boards or just big eyes stealing an opponent's monster, which I really, really like. So I've been sort of toying around with these ratios and I realized that the deck can still play massive non-engine even with all these engines scuffed together. So you still can play three Ash, three Veiler, three Nib, which is nine cards on top of three Book of Moon, that's 12. And then Infinite Impermanent three is 15 non-engine cards, which I think is a golden number, especially for this upcoming format when people are actually testing out random decks with huge firepower, huge combo, things like the synchro decks that are just basically all gas. So being able to play going second, I think is really, really important. And especially in this deck where you can mix and match your hand traps, whittle down your opponent's resources, and then you have a bunch of one card starters that spell instant doom to your opponent. I just had a one card, one game uh, replay, which I'll show you guys in a sec, where I actually got hand looped by the Mulan Glacier, and we're still able to come back just by top decking a Cornfield Quaddle. So I'll show you guys that really quick. But again, this deck is really, really handy. Chimera Fusion, again, is not once per turn for the actual fusion effect. So being able to fuse constantly into things like Guardian Chimera or just reset it and then on your opponent's turn, go into Guardian Chimeras or Magnum the Reliever. Potentially going into Chimera the Illusion Beast for OTKs, as we talked about previously, this card is actually just a Ninja Shadow Mosquito. How it works is you can attack a number of times equal to the number of fusions that you actually use to make them. And you can use Chimera the Flying Mythical Beast plus one or more illusion monsters. So what that means is any time that you have a body on board that has at least 2,500 attack or at least 2k attack, okay, all you need is like 2k, even 1,800 I think will suffice. So 1,800 or more attack and then you have any of these one card starters, so Sword Knight or Cornfield Quaddle, you can actually make the full combo into Chimera the Illusion Beast with three monsters so he can attack three times and when your opponent has an attack position monster, what you can do is you can crash this, make his attack zero, attack twice for 3,100 since the monster doesn't die by battle when he battles it because he's an illusion, so they take 62 200 direct to the face and then you use your last monster which has 1800 or more attack to swing for game which comes up a lot when you actually nibiru them so you put the nibiru attack token in attack mode and then you do that full combo and then you attack twice into the nibiru with the uh, Lucian Beast, put the token to zero, do 62, and then kill them with Nibiru. So that's actually something that came up. So guys, just a fair thing to note. Obviously, there's a lot of wiggle room as well. If you guys decide you want to test the Fright for Patchwork stuff, you can definitely cut down a bit on the non-engine too. I think anywhere between like 10 to 12 non-engines might be a good start to see how relevant it is and if that would pass. I'm just sticking to 15 to be safe because I just lose that roll all the time. So I'm just thinking about being safer. But we could also go back on the Castira, maybe double Unicorn and maybe some field spells as well but i just find that you don't want to open multiples of these cards you would rather just open one copy of the card period because you're using your normal summon on the actual mirror sword knight and you don't want to actually set up birth and normal summon fenrir because then that means you're not playing with the rest of your engine right so just uh handy things to note there the other cool thing about branded fusion is that you actually set up 
Fallen Valbaz in the grave as well as Rinbrum. So when you use Rinbrum to fuse into a Guardian Chimera, Rinbrum's effect is live, so you can banish it to bring back Fallen Valbaz to use his potential material for fusion, or just use his own effect, discard a card, and then slam that Mirror Jade onto the table. So then you can just dump the Albion as a missile to banish any card on the field, any monster on the field rather that your opponent controls. So it's really, really handy dandy. And I actually really love this deck because the playstyle is really unique. Just jamming on one card engines and your opponent kind of has to deal with it. Even stumming like a Fenrir, you know, like everyone has to think when you go like special summon Fenrir, main phase one. And then they're like, okay, thinking, thinking. Same kind of deal here. All these cards make them, force them to think because they're all one card combos. So even activating brand infusion is really nice because it's also Ash Bait. So typically you want to do brand infusion first because I feel like it's a lot better to actually resolve the combo with the Mirror Knight because you get way more pluses. So they go Ash on Brand Infusion, which they obviously have to, and then we can go Normal Summon uh, Sword Knight and then go full combo. So that's just one thing to note. Fair thought though, if you are playing against this deck and they go Brand Infusion and you know for a fact that they're playing Chimera, you can actually hold the Ash because they're probably nine times out of ten still going to search for the Gazelle play. So you can just Ash the Mirror Knight and that probably ends their turn, but shh, don't tell anyone that before they know. <laughs> okay, I'm going to show you guys a cool little replay we just had of this deck, and yeah, it's actually a lot of fun. All right, guys, we're back with the replay. This is a lot of fun. Our opponent actually wins the die roll. So just showcasing the sheer power of this deck going first and second, especially with the non-engine cards. You can see this hand is just crazy. It's basically pure cash. <laughs> like we're having three tra hand traps, one Book of Moon, and then one Pressured Planet. But of course they go Deep Steam Minstrel. I'm like, what the heck is this? But they discard Nemo Angler. So we probably know that they're playing Sprites. So plus they're playing 60 cards. So they're going to hit the Ash. So we can't Ash in response to the Angler, which they have to do there. We still have Nibiru and Effect Feather. So I'm thinking like, you know, we're in a good spot. And they go effect, they go deep CD, but I'm like, we can't really bail her here because they're just going to gigantic and then the Nib's dead, right? So we have to let this go through. Obviously, we have to let them search and then Nib around uh, things, but they actually get a little bit, uh, we get a little punished here because they actually do add Milling Glacier as well as a copy of Dragoons, but then they go into Herald of the Arclight. So we're like, oh, we can't even effect failure anymore. So we kind of have to Nib here to deal with the one for one on the Herald. So they're just going to negate that. That gets destroyed. We discard two cards. Potentially could have held the Nib as well. Just like have something big to run over the Herald of the Arclight. And then that way if Nib's discarded, we could have kept the Rathos. But I wasn't thinking that far ahead. And unfortunately, we do get a little punished here. But we're still in the game because I'm thinking like as long as they don't have any significant Omni negates, just one Mirror Sword Knight is still enough to play around a lot of things. So we have the Book of Moon as well to hit the potential Sprite Red. But they're going to go for the Melfi combo. And look, guys, they have so many cards on us. Normally, you would have scooped by now. But this deck just says something else. Of course, we add back the Ash Blossom in the end phase. So that's kind of handy against the Melfi Caddy as well. But we already know that the Herald is gone. So typically, these decks probably don't play two. All they only have is the other level four Melfi Synchro. We do top deck in the Court for Quattle. Boom, perfect. The exact card that we wanted. We're going to go ahead and use that. And actually, surprisingly, Mirror Sword Knight is going to put in huge work, huge value against this specific board. Because previously, he searched Sprite Double Cross. So we know that they have that. Plus, they have the Caddy. And obviously, Mirror Sword Knight is a quick effect during either player's turn. Not even in the main phase. So it's just in insane with the 1900 attack that can just jump and fly and run away. So we're going to go into Battle Phase and just kill the Caddy here. I, I figured we could just do our fusion plays in the main phase too to blow up his board. We don't really care about battle phase. Getting the battle phase rally to trade with the caddy, of course, is going to run away, which is fine. And then they're going to bait out the effect of the Mirror Sword Knight by using the Mafia of the Forest. So we think here, think about Ashen, but I'm like, yeah, the Herald's already gone. They don't really have any good targets to synchro into, so it doesn't really matter. The Synchro Melfi that they would put out anyways, it would target the Mirror Sword Knight, which we can chain response, so it doesn't really matter. Of course, they held it, so they can just caddy later on in the turn. We're going to chain the effect of Mirror Sword Knight in response to the Melfi of the Forest trigger effect, which targeted our monster. Summon out the Big Wing Burfamet, use the effect to add a copy of the Fusion spell, as well as a copy of the Gazelle. Potentially could play three copies of Gazelle, because one thing I realized is that when you do start with Branded Fusion, and then you Gazelle on your turn, on their turn when you bring back the Burfamet, you actually don't have another Gazelle to search. So that's one thing that you guys could potentially test as well. And then from here, main phase two, activate Chimera Fusion. Just going to go into our uh, Chimera, the King Phantom Beasts here, just to start getting some value with the end phase discard on top of having the Cornfield Quadra, which protects us from the Sprite Double Cross, which obviously targets. So we have to get the Chimera, the Flying Mythical Beast on the table immediately to make sure that the Sword Knight and the Quadra are alive. Effects of the Gazelle to search as well as Big Wing Burfamet and then Chain Link 3 Chimera just to protect those guys in the graveyard, the Chain Links. And then we're going to bring back, well, another copy of Cornfield Quattle from our deck to our hand. And then we're going to bring back the Mirror Sword Knight. From here, we can bring back the Chimera Fusion. Again, it's not once per turn to actually activate. Only the Grave Effect is once per turn, guys. 
So we're gonna go ahead here and actually fuse again, I imagine, for a Guardian Chimera, which will actually hit the table. I debated a little bit, potentially keeping the Chimera of the Phantom Beast on the table. Maybe that was an option because we are gonna have to see Chimera go bye-bye with a Stripe Double Cross. Now that we no longer control the Chimera, it means that their engraved weenie effects are actually dead, which is still okay, I think, because we still have the effect of the Chimera, the King of Phantom Beast, in the graveyard. These guys just have infinite effects. It drives me crazy how much value you get out of this, because this can bring back the Burphomet, which can then search another Gazelle plus a Chimera Fusion. So we have follow-up, and we have Book of Moon and Ash to protect us. We already kind of know what they have, and then we're going to pop two cards and draw a card. We draw another Book of Moon, which is just perfect. So we can go ahead and pop two things, and then I'm going to go ahead and pop the back row. I think could pop the Moulin Glacier and prevent his battle phase, but I'm thinking, like, we have Ash and two Book of Moon. We're probably not going to die next turn. We also have Chimera to chump block with the Bingwig and Perfomet. So all we have to do is get rid of the back row, just in case it's anything relevant, like a starter or something, which we determined that it was not. He's going to bring out the Penny anyways just to get a body on the table because it's a legal activation. He's already used the effect of the other guy to return the hand earlier that turn. So just reading that to make sure... And then we're going to discard in the end phase, hitting the Abyss which is kind of nice. He's going to go ahead and actually go into the Nightmare Phoenix, I guess, trying to OTK somehow with Axis Code or something, just picking off the back roll, discarding the Dragoons, which we're going to chain in response to the red that was just summoned this turn, which is pretty devastating, pretty good for us. But obviously we had two books they didn't know, so there's no way for them to play around that. And then from here, they're going to go ahead and normal caddy, going to go into the Gigantic, which is going to get hit by the effect of Book of Moon. They already knew we had Ash, but they probably wanted to go into the Nib, uh, the Zeus play main phase two. But the book just deals with both. We're going to take 2800, and then this is just game because we can banish the effect of the Chimera to summon back the Burphomet. Burphomet's effect is going to add a copy of the fusion spell as well as our second copy of gazelle and yeah we just rinse and repeat what we did the previous turn it doesn't really matter what we do now the game's pretty much over we just have to clear our opponent's table gonna fuse off use the chains again add another copy of cornfield quaddle bring back mirror sword knight bring back chimera fusion and now we can just make another copy of our garden chimera pop a card destroy something and we draw Brandon Fusion, so yeah, the game's just super over because we go into albion effective albion's gonna vanish make mirror jade and yeah our opponent's just gonna scoop right there Okay, game two. We're going second. Decided to bring in Drone Lockbird because it's very good against specifically the Lantern stuff. Obviously, they go add Dragoon. Dragoon effect on the chain. We can chain Drone Lockbird there. So that scuffs them for the turn. But they still have their Sprites play, which is whatever. They're not going to be able to go into Sprite Jet and search a Double Cross, which is already great value out of that one Drone Lockbird. They are going to go ahead and go to the Anger player. Typical. Very nice that you can actually do that off DPC Diva plus Depth Abyss, just going right into your Sprite combos. That's really, really cool, in my opinion. Gonna go ahead and summon out the Sprite Red, which is fine. And then from here, we are... They're actually gonna pass. That was crazy what they have in hand. We, I'm kind of curious. Wow, they just had, like, full engine in hand. I guess a Drone Lock would really put in a lot of work there. Else we would have probably got our hand looped. So, we're gonna draw for turn. Wow, this hand is just beautiful. Obviously, the one thing that we do want to kind of play around is Drone Lockbird. If we go Fenrir Effect, and then we add something, and they draw, then the Gazelle's kind of dead. So, I kind of we kind of debated about, like, going Special Fenrir, a swing over the red, and then go Gazelle Search. But we decided to go for the Greedy Play anyways. Just go Fen Fenrir and hope that they negate, and then we can play Pressure Planet for the Unicorn, activate Birth, and potentially just OTK them this turn with the uh, effect of the... Um, the effect of... Uh, uh, the other guy, the illusion guy. What is that guy's name? The uh, mythical beast that has this mirror sword knight combined with it. <laughs> I can't remember the name. But that would have been OTK if they uh, actually used the effect of red earlier. So we're going to try and bait out the red here to, so we can get the unicorn and then get the burst set up because it's free. So why not? They are going to bite and they are going to tribute off the sprint there. We're going to get a lot of value here. Just going to go ahead and cast your unicorn to the burst. Activate the effect of Burst, bring back Fenrir. Probably could have held that, just play around the Biru, honestly, because we no real reason to bring that out now. Gonna add another copy of Fenrir, the field spell. Just gonna doogie a little bit. Gonna go ahead and Gazelle's effect to add a copy of Burphomet so we can have the Chimera Fusion live here. Typically, Gazelle on its own is a pretty bad draw, but when you open it with any other combo piece, it's uh, pretty good. So we're just gonna go into our Chimera here just to get the trade-off value. If they have Nim, it doesn't matter. We still rip a card and we have the value effect in the graveyard on top of adding back Chimera Fusion and then on top of the effects of the guys we get in the grave. So add Cornfield Quaddle, 
So yeah, again, guys, you can see if they actually negated with the Sprite Red, it would have been OTK because we could have summoned out the Unicorn and then get the Burst, get the Fenrir back, and then go into the Chimera, the King of Phantom Beasts, into the other Chimera, the bigger Chimera, and then we could have attacked three times, made his Gigantic Zero, attack for 62, and then attack with Unicorn or Fenrir for game. So that's what we wanted to go for over there. That's why we use the Effective Fenrir in main phase instead of attacking over the Sprite Red. Gonna add back the Chimera Fusion, and then we're gonna just overlay these for Dark Hunt. Again, like this rank seven toolbox is really useful for picking apart your opponent's board, so we don't have to burn the Chimera Fusion to make Chimera on our turn. So just gonna pick apart his board piece by piece here, getting rid of the weenies. And we're gonna set these cards, end phase rip a card, and this is a really good spot to be in because we are just like set up. We have Chimera Fusion, Imperm, we have the effect of Chimera to rip a card, and then on their turn, we also have the effect in the graveyard if we do fusion it off. Ripping that small world apart. They do actually top deck Droll for turn, I believe, which is really unfortunate for them. But they are going to go ahead and normal summon the Neptibus from here. We're actually going to respond to the Chimera Fusion. Uh, potentially could have held it just because they have so many cards in hand. But we got a little hasty. Wanted to go ahead and make the Guardian Chimera. Also would have been punished by a top deck Ash. But the chances of that were pretty slim. And it's not like we would have lost on the spot because we still have Imperm. So it's not awful. We're going to draw two cards. Going to get rid of the Neptibus. But they do have the one for one extender. So they're just going full combo here. Going to be able to resolve that. Going to be able to send a copy of Dragoons. And then we are going to chain the effect of Mirror Knight just while we can. Because the thing with Mirror Knight is it's kind of restrictive in that you can only negate effects on the field. And you can only activate the effect when you do control Chimera the Flying Mythical Beast. So if we don't use this now, potentially the Chimera could get threatened. Which means that the Mirror Sword Knight will get no value. So might as well just get the one for one trade anyways while we can. They're going to add Lapis Dragon. I have no idea what the heck they were making here. Immortal Dragon to dump Plague. I, I wanted to see where this was going. I was like, yeah, probably not going to imperm that. What even are they going to dump? Like an Ash or something? But no, they go ahead and dump Plague. Really, really cool. That's level 2 body there. Going to go ahead and blue. And I said that we're going to imperm here because I know they potentially might play Baron or something. I know the Immortal Dragon is level 4 right now. So with the other sprites, they could potentially just make a Baron. So might as well just imperm that. And the chances of us dying here are very slim. Very impossible. They're going to go in the Sky Century cover. Centuria. Main phase 2 is Zeus in Desperation. Which is fine because now we just get the effect of our Chimera in the grave. This guy is just insane. Being able to bring back a copy of Burfamet. Burfamet's effect will trigger, allowing us to add a copy of Chimera Fusion and Gazelle. See, in the grind game, this card is just nuts. And this game is just over because now we're able to make another Chimera. We do have the Mirror Sword Knight, which is instantly online now that we control Chimera, the King of Phantom Beasts. So that Zeus is effectively a sitting duck. Gonna go ahead and just burn off the turn player priority. So what happened there was we searched the Mirror Knight, normal summoned it, turn player priority to tribute. So that way, if you change Zeus, we can just banish it from the graveyard. We get a free quadro on the table. Gonna activate the branded, the Chimera Fusion that we added back, and then just go into the Guardian Chimera to pop. It's gonna force the Zeus trade with the Sword, Mirror Sword Knight, and this game is pretty much just over from here because yeah, there's just nothing he can do. Just gonna pop, just gonna tactics, draw branded fusion for the style points. So you can kind of see how this deck plays. It's actually a lot of fun. We're really centering on the actual Chimera engine as opposed to the Branded and the Cashier stuff. Those are just supplementary to our engine. It allows us to bait out stuff from our opponent. It allows us to use a toolbox to get rid of our opponent's cards when they have a board in the grind state. And then we run away with the game with the sheer advantage that we get from the Chimera stuff. And it also is nice that we don't really care about cards like D barrier as much or ash because we have multiple cards that interact with that we can go branded fusion they go D barrier we chain chimera fusion or we just use fan and unicorns to kind of control the game and live for a turn with in tandem with our non-engine so yeah that's about it for the video if you guys like this definitely let me know what you think of the deck how we can make it better and i'll see you guys in the next video Bye bye